Uh, yeah, so Palmer, it's, it's good to be to, to be in this conversation. You just asked me what my YouTube channel is and said it's Nemo is Sean. And, um, and a smile came on my face because, so for me, I had been going through uh, this whole month in May that I called Too Much May. Um, I had gotten triggered by someone coming out and saying something along the lines that made me feel like, basically they're like, yeah, man, you're a lot. You know, that's your unique thing. And in my mind, what I heard was, you're being really dismissive toward me. You like, like, rather, like, like for me, I'm not even trying to be a lot. I'm just like existing. And I really, I remember telling them because it was, it was around, I went to a conference and I was asking a question at the end of every single uh, speaker. And, um, and cause that's just cause, and, and that person was like, yeah, that's your style. And I remember just being like, just feeling so angry, Palmer. It was just like, I'm like, you don't get it. I wish that someone else came in there and had a, a question to ask. I wish that I was in an environment where I wasn't up to me to have to like, to have to do the work to like elevate it for everyone else. Like, like I, like, like I wish other people were asking questions, but like, lo and behold, it wasn't happening. So I needed to get my question answered. So I went and I asked, you know? You're so, like, you're so the doer, man. You, yeah. yeah, I've known you for years and you definitely are. You're like, I don't care if it's not perfect. I'm doing it. I'm putting it out there. I'm stirring the pot. I'm getting conversation going. That's you. That's it. That's it. And that, that's really interesting. But it's like, I tell, I tell myself, I'm like, one of the best things I can do for other people sometimes is just to be selfish, right? Especially in these kinds of things. It's like, it's like, I'm going to ask the question that's on my mind, whether or not other people are, other people are going to ask it or not, because for a lot of people, it's the same question that they have, but they don't know how to ask it yet, you know? Um, and so when I found out with the, with the too much May stuff, what, what I realized is that like, dude, I'm a lot, like, that's not a bad thing. It's a, it's actually a really, really wonderful, wonderful thing. It's like a thing that's like, I have so much that I'm too much. Like I'm good. Like I'm fully, my tank is like fully captured. I'm awesome. And I have enough to go and share, you know? So that's, so, so that's where now like Nemo and Shang is really coming out there. Like, I'm really like, you know what? I'm going to take up space. Like it's okay. And I take up a whole lot of space and guess what? because I take up a lot of space, I also leave a ton of room for other people. Like I, like I am totally, totally cool just stepping into it being about me so that I can actually make it about you. But if I'm spending too much time in my mind, like trying to be like, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about me. We miss out on you. So I wanted to just kind of like share that there and just kind of like put it out there. Cause like for that's, showing up and it seems simple it's like it's like so what's your youtube channel you're like nemo shang it's like okay that makes sense but for me there's so much more that goes behind it because I, I it was a conscious choice and one where i realized like i was hiding by putting my brand behind another company because i was afraid that like it would be too much for them. who's this guy to think about to, to call his business after him you know who's this guy that, like, out there i'm like you know who i am i'm nemo shang <laughs> Nice there's to meet plenty you. of attorneys, there's plenty of CPAs, they all do it. I the know. architects, they do it. Who else does it? I'm I in mean, a world of coaches and there are a ton of coaches that do it. But it's, it was, and that's, and that's the part that's really funny to me where it's like, at the end of the day, it was in my head. It was my mindset around it, you know? Uh, and so you're, so, you're, you're like, I, I wanted to share that there just to, just to, because it felt real in this moment here yeah. um, to share. And so, Palmer, we, we were talking a little bit earlier. Like I said, I'd love to create a, a space of, of serving you. Um, and I'd love to just, like, just, just do this. Like, the game, there's a game that I've been playing with people recently, and I want to see if, if you might be interested in it. The game that I've been playing, it's called the Next Level Game, right? And the way that it works is it's actually quite simple. Um, the thing that we focus here on is on helping you take the steps in alignment with your next level, as opposed to taking more steps with where you are right now. Uh, you were telling me about some 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 opportunities, like basically it's like the difference between being like, I know you're in sales, so we'll just use, we'll use some examples. The difference between like being like the top person in sales and being like, and being a manager. They're just two different levels, two different, like, like you can be the, the top at one class, but it doesn't mean that it actually means that you're going to be, be playing in that other level. 
right? And so that's where I love to, to kind of, if you're, if you're open to this year, that's the game I'd love to play with you today to kind of see like, what are the other buckets that, that you would rather be playing in? Or that like, what are your next levels for you? And how do we start taking the initial steps associated with being in those levels so that you're not just continuing to get more of what you already have? Is, is yeah, that a game that's open to you that you want to play? Yeah, and that's something that I've, I've been thinking about. I've been sort of worried that, you know, I, I, I maxed out, I put in overtime to be successful, to reach sort of a, a merit for myself, to give myself even satisfaction. Like, hey, I've done this. I can put this on my resume and somebody will notice it. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been able to. Right? I have achieved, so that in itself is impressive. Whether or not it's exactly your dream or not, it definitely shows a lot of character, tenacity, um, and uh, and I've, I've I've worried about that. Like even you know my day to day, you know, should I be focusing on selling in my territory, or should I be focusing on building a, a sales manager business plan, um, or you know do I stay an extra hour just to do this kind of stuff? Either one of those for this company or do I go to a whole different company? Mm -hmm. um, and is that company close to in line with, you know, what I do now or radically different, even the position. I, I, I feel like I fell into sales. Mm -hmm. I think people have always said like, Oh yeah, you'd be good at sales. And my dad is in sales and maybe that's something. But um, I also think that, you know, people say, uh, you know, oh, because you're friendly, you have, you get along with people. That doesn't mean you're a good salesman necessarily, or salesperson. Um, you know, it it really does take different skills uh, than just being able to talk to people. And so I don't know. I just I've yeah. fallen track. I've been successful at it, but it's never really been the this kind of creative outlet that I love and it's you know it does or fulfill that that part of me <clears throat> yeah. and this is this is a place where I think this is why I like to play the next level game because it's like like I see it like you you've you've accomplished success you've achieved right and you know you've you've gotten that level of like what I call like kind of conventional success it's like you've done all the things you know they said hey you'll be good at it you're like okay you and, and you you prove them right. Like you've, you've done great things with it. Like you've been able to build a life around that there. And I was an actuaryist for Deloitte. And then I decided I wanted to go into life coaching and you know, exactly. Right. So like you're, you're talking to someone who knows you're talking to someone who knows this. It's like, it's like, look, I can do those things. And <laughs> exactly. Right. So this is, this is, this is the areas. So I, I guess like, I mean, you are talking to someone who's, who's lived that, who's like, who was an actuary um then went into tech um then became an entrepreneur you know and like and i've reinvented it in, in one sense i've reinvented myself each and every time right but i don't know if that's actually given myself enough justice in each of those different iterations there it's been me honing and refining more of who i am and allowing and just kind of like peeling away the things that aren't necessarily me Appealing away to mm -hmm. things that, that are like, you know, when I left the actuary world, my parents and I'm, we had like, and my friends, like we had this like long conversations, right? Because they're like, you've invested eight years of your life. You've taken multiple exams. You have to do hundreds of continuing, hundreds, hundreds of hours of continuing education on your own to take and pass actuarial exams. And you're just going to walk away from that to go be in tech. And when I was, I was getting in tech in 2000 and, 15, I think. Uh, so it's like, it's like, it still had, it was still like just starting to become a thing where people felt a little bit more comfortable with it. Right. Uh, and maybe, maybe, maybe it still is it. And I just feel, I feel that way because now my communities are more tech, tech aligned. Um, but the way I describe it, it's like, yeah, I, 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 I hit like a conventional level of success. You know, I like, like, I know what it's like to make six figures here. I know what it's like to like have, um, to, to work for large organizations. I know all those things. I've done it, you know, but there's something more out there. There's something more that I want and there's a fulfillment that comes along with it. And each time that I went, it was just like, 
oh, I'm going to get rid of these other things that weren't aligned with what I really wanted. And I'm going to be a little bit closer to my core. And then when I came out and I decided to do coaching, like, I'm like, well, what if I can just do that element of helping people be amazing in the world, which I love to do, of helping people show up as themselves and bring all their gifts to the table. You'll find with me, Palmer, I don't like to just play in like the best world. I'm like, I'm, if you're bringing me your best self, I'm going to be really disappointed because I'm like, there's so much more to you. Like, I want all of it, you know? So, so you, so I, so I get it firsthand and I would love to, if, if it's fun with, if it's fun for you, let's go ahead and let's refine a little bit. You've, you've created the, the conventional success. What, what does unconventional success look like for you? What is, what is, you know, exponential success look like for you? Like we know that you can achieve. So what would it look like? Yeah, that's an, it's been a nice thing. I think the knowing you can achieve is good affirmation of my sort of uh, ability, right? Um, I get scared of unknowns and, you know, financial instability. Um, and even reputational instability a little bit. Um, like if I told people, hey, I'm going to um, be a professional cliff diver, you know, I think, uh, okay, uh, that's off the beaten path. For me, I, I, I continue to love um, movies um, and love to tell rich stories. And I would love to uh, tell stories that teach people how to be better, um, be kinder, be more principled, um, more whole, and more loving. And uh, um, I get a f I, I love the, I love the element of the story, and so I feel like I need to go to a writing class mm -hmm. and take storytelling. I've never really done it. Um, I don't necessarily think of myself as a strong writer per se, but there's different types of writing. And uh, I feel like the more you do, the better you get. And I just, you know, I would, could sign up for a writing class. I wasn't, it wasn't my major, you know, I, I just was so removed from it that I've sort of felt in myself that, oh, that's not me. Like I've already taken my path and I would be so far behind if I jumped, you know, or even if it was in, you know, I don't think I want to be a cameraman, but, uh, you know, that's a part of making the movie, right? And gra like graphics and editing, I don't have those skills. I don't know if I have the patience, but I have an aesthetic forte. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's thinking about that application of design that, you know, I do love the creative part of it, but I also love the producing and the assembling and the team element of it um, is something I know I'm good at. I know I can take a charge for. Um, and I just think if you're going to do anything, uh, you should try to uplift people. Um, and in, in particular in the arts, you know, I think about what kind of shows I like watching and reasons why and, and, you know, some stuff is really good, but it's like, ugh, I just felt gross. I felt terrible after watching that. And there was there was a, a play called uh, American in Paris, and uh, one of the leads has a line, and he says, you know, the, the people have a lot of struggles in life, but it's like, as artists, we don't need to be showing more of that. Let's show the brighter and the sweeter sides to make people feel good and remember why they go through the struggles they go through because they're fighting for something they love. And so let's bring more of that sunshine into the world. Uh, and I, I really love that line. It's really stuck with me. Um, and so I guess that's kind of the general cause. Of, um, yeah, art is broad, right? There's a lot of different ways to take it. And, uh, you and I have done some singing. I'm, yeah. I'm no, uh, you know, Freddie Mercury. I don't know. <laughs> Not well, that, I, yeah. There's there's some things here that that I'm I'm hearing come come through here, and I think there's. I had a conversation with someone who talked about we were talking about that Star Trek, 
And actually what we're really talking about was inclusion and diversity and inclusion. And really, is there space for exclusion, right? Um, and that was a really interesting conversation that we had. But it, 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 during the conversation, she talked about that the arts had been used almost like as a blueprint for success for people, where the arts were used like as a way of saying, this might be, you may not know this is possible yet, but we're going to implant the seed. We're going to start giving you a blueprint of what it might look like. We're talking about Star Trek in particular um, and how it's like the world that Star Trek looked like, what that looked like kind of gave us a, kind of gives us a blueprint as to how diversity could look like, you know, how inclusion could really look like. And so when you're talking about like, it's like, look, we get that the world, we get how the world is right now. Like we don't need to just continue to replicate that through the arts right now. We can use this as an, as an actual opportunity to almost show a picture of what, what it could be or to help them, help them know what it is that they're fighting for, give them something to fight for. Like, I think that, that really resonates there. Let me ask you, there's, there's, there's a, there's a number of different things that, that you, you talked about in here. If there was the, the question that's on my mind is like, what's the movie that you would love to make? What's the title of the movie that you would love to make? If you had all the resources, like it's like, what's, what's the title of that movie? I don't know yet. I don't know. Go ahead and get, give yourself give yourself a little bit of time to think about it. And it doesn't have to be what you have to do forever, but in this moment, okay, it's a it's a movie that maybe has a rich story, teaches people to be kinder and better. It's uplifting, or it could be something completely different. It could be a horror movie that still uh, like gets the same thing across, right? I don't want to I don't want to pigeonhole you. Um, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Never ending truth. Never ending truth. Ooh. That seems really intriguing there. Tell me more about that. Tell me tell me why that came to mind. Well. I think you know, I, I like the word never ending because I think that characters have to go through a struggle. And I love seeing, I love seeing acting that feels so committed in the moment. But what I really love is I love when an actor shows me something throughout the whole story. And then the actor shows me something completely different that I'm also enraptured by, by the end. Because for me, uh, a story... I can't judge a movie until I've seen the end. And it's all about, I love twists and I love like morals. And so I love knowing why I'm watching this, why the character did this for so long. And I like kind of not knowing, I like just being still intrigued the whole time. I want to be engaged, but I like thinking back and saying, oh my gosh, like that's the reason why, you know, for example, life is beautiful. Have you seen that movie? I haven't. So we can keep this a spoiler free zone because once, once the spoiler comes up, I'm like, I get, I can't watch it afterwards. So <laughs> I know. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Spoiler free. Um, but I, I get, I get, I get the sense. I get the sense of what, what you're saying. Like, like, like I've, I've had, I've had those moments of, of twists and the really great, the, for me, the really great ones are the ones where it's like, you go back and you're like, Oh, this wasn't just like something they tossed out. It was like, if I was look, if I had realized this the entire time, everything they did made sense because of that. Is that, is that the sense that you're talking about there? Yeah. 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 I, I love that, that feeling. Um, a movie that I really love and associate with is um, the Dead Poet Society. Okay. Because that's this kid. Have you seen the movie? Uh, I have, but it's been a, it's been a long time I, uh, since I last saw it. Rather than talking about the plot, though, okay. for this conversation, yeah. I think the plot's going to be less important as to, like, what did it make you feel? Like, why, like, what is it about the Dead Poets Society that, like, what did it make you feel that 
Makes that sense. movie, that movie, I feel like gave me a lot of courage because it was um, promoting um, individuality and pulling out people's voice, and it also uh, was sort of exactly the track of conventional, um, and then someone who takes a different path and is also able to express something really beautiful. Um, you know, despite uh, some a variety of sort of pressures to go back to the regular way. And um, I've definitely associated with that. Um, I also think it's a great movie, but it's personally one of my top movies because of, because of that. Yeah. And you had said something earlier that, like, I was like, I'm not sure if there's something to, to explore here, but now I kind of want to. Can you hear me? Did my, did my sound go down a little bit? It dropped, but I can hear you now. All right, hold on. Let me do something really quickly on my end to fix that. Okay, how am I now? Can you hear me? You're fine, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so what was coming up for me when you were saying this was that you said they were right at that same like kind of crossroad of like, okay, we've done the conventional, we get the conventional, we know where that kind of leads and we want to do something that's a little unconventional. And you had said earlier, you'd mentioned two words or two phrases that really came up for me. Instability. I'm really curious about what instability looks like for you. And then on the other thing is like, you're like a bit, something that's off the beaten path. Right. And so right now, Living, living, living my alternate self life. I express those were my concerns. Is that what you said? Um, I don't remember the context in which, which, like, it was just like when we were f first starting out here. Yeah, I, was, I think it was something about like what's the next level, and you had mentioned some things as to why you like, like what your interests were, and what. Well, we have the recording, so we can go back and see like exactly what, what came up. But it was this element of like I don't want to have financial instability, and then there's also reputational instability. Right, you talk about those two types of inst instability, and you're like, "Yeah, here goes, here goes Palmer. He's going off and he's doing something that's off the beaten path, right?" And it, like that last part was just kind of like a little bit of an aside as to like, "Hey, this is why I couldn't do it because it would be off the beaten path." And in hearing some of the things of what really feels uplifting to you, what really feels like it, like um, like really resonates with you, and part of this like captured in that poet society. Um, some of that is someone that's on a conventional path that has gotten that, that things could go right for them if they just, you know, conform and stay in line. But there's something else for them that's off the beaten path. And it, it comes out with their expression, their, their individuality, their, the bringing to life of their voice. How much of that resonates with you in terms of like, in, in terms of, a potential desire that you have within you. I think quite a lot. Um, sometimes I like, you know, just if I'm in between whatever I'm doing, walking from place to place, you know, first thing in the morning, eating cereal, whatever, I, I like feel myself i'm like I, I i want to do this i want to create something i want to overlay i want to put this music to this image and i just want to i want to just do this and i've had that feeling constantly for a decade and in ways i've been able to express some of like really fun qualities but not fully wholeheartedly as I hear in my brain when I'm just doing my own thing. And I'm, I've had a hard time, I guess, taking the action steps to get the skills and put the pen to paper and that sort of um, thing, which I feel is a little bit strange because my job right now is very independent. It's very like, whatever you want to do, Palmer, whatever, you know, like I go out and I set my own appointments. I see my own clients. I ask what their needs are. I figure out what they need, you know, pricing or the whole concept and, and I package it together for them. It's not, it's not like it's a regimented process so much. And 
it's totally about my drive. So when I get home, I wonder if maybe like, I'm like, okay, yeah. I've been doing all this stuff for everybody else. I'm just going to veg. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that, that, um, that's a little bit of a question. Um, but I feel like I just don't, I don't bust through the wall for the, for the do it part. And I don't give myself enough honor. I don't, I don't, I don't pay respect to my heart that enough, probably. Um, the heart of what I just kind of get emotional about what I just kind of feel like uh, that would be beautiful or, you know, Yeah, I guess. And I really, I really get into um, acting in movies. My wife is an actress and, you know, she and I watch a lot very carefully. Um, and, uh, and I just really love that. And I feel like I have such a strong sense of like, oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> or, okay, I'm, I'm over that. Maybe everyone's opinion, maybe everyone, everyone has an opinion, but I feel like I'm pretty confident in in mine so i also think that there must be i must see things quick or i must i must have some sort of um eye for it aesthetic understanding connection that level of attention where i'm like yes no yes no yes no and maybe everyone can do it but i don't think so yeah no i I, there's something about what you're saying that feels really um I feel it feels like you're like one of your natural places where your genius comes up. Like you just see it. You're just able to, you're able to just be with that. And I think there, there's certain things in there where just, yeah. What were you going to say? Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. true. So let me, let me explore this a little bit here with you. Cause I think, I think you talked about like hitting a wall, you know, and, and like busting through with action. Right. And I just want to give us a little bit more space around, around like having to take action in this current moment here or like, anything around that. And I want to just kind of tap into some things that you said earlier around paying respect to your, to your heart, honoring your heart. Right. So let's do me a favor really quickly. Can you like take your hands and just put it on top of your heart at this moment? Right. And just like breathe deeply into your heart. Feel like, feel like the beating of your heart right now. Right. And if you, if it's helpful for you, you can go ahead and close your eyes. But I love for us to like, like this, this right here, this, it seems like the conversation that we need to have is like, what does your heart want to express? And I want to, I want to give us some, some chance to do that normal and most conventional conversations would stay in your head and be like, what are all the different steps? But you know, you kind of know the steps there. I love to tap into like that beautiful place that your heart really has out there. So is that, is that good with you, Palmer? Yeah. Okay. This is nice. Okay. All right, cool. Go ahead and close your eyes and just like breathe deeply and deep, breathe, breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Just do it on your own pace, but allow some depth as you're doing it. And as you're breathing in, with each breath, breathe just a little bit deeper. And I want you to breathe and fill up the space from your heart down to your gut. Connect the beating of your heart the thing that you want to pay respect to all the way down to your deep intuition and wisdom, the feeling in your gut where you're just going down the street and you just hear the music, you know, intuitively that there's something that you have there. I like us to just start breathing in those two spaces and fill yourself up with air and breath around that. And as you're doing this, go ahead in your own way, You don't have to say anything out loud. It may not even be with words. Go ahead and just pay respect to your your heart. Really show your heart the respect that it deserves. Be grateful for your heart in terms of what it's given you, what it's allowed you to accomplish, to achieve from the conventional sense, and also the gift that it gives you in terms of knowing where your true path is, whether it's beaten or not. Go ahead and pay respect to your heart right now. And I want you to go ahead and honor your heart in this moment, in the way that only you know how. 
in a way that your heart can truly receive. Go ahead and just honor your heart. I would like for you to come in and take a deep breath, deep in through the nose and have it go through your heart down to your, your gut, to your deep, to your deep part of your belly. And trust that what your heart knows is getting passed to your intuition as well. And then take another breath. This time, breathe it in almost deep from your belly. And when you breathe out, go ahead and pass it up through your heart once again. And let it out with a large sigh. Ah. Ah. I'm going to invite you to open your eyes when you feel ready. And you can answer this place coming from the deepest desire of your heart. What, and I'm going to talk from my, my deep wisdom, my intuition to you, the deepest desire of your heart. If there was one thing your heart needed to say right now, what would it be? Jump in. Uh, jump into a set. Just contribute in any way and every way, and just try. Just, just put yourself there, because um, you will contribute. And if you just try to add and add and add and add, eventually people are going to see that like you have a, a skill and that you have desire and the genuine passion and it would be a right place to be. How does that feel to say that out loud? What do you feel within your body when you say that? It feels, it feels really good. It feels nice to allow that kind of space to be affirmed and develop and, and it gives me, I mean, I've known about it, but I think just taking a quiet moment for it makes me feel more, more res resolute about it. Um, more wholly, so, no, um, whole, completely, I guess, yeah. that... <clears throat> I know I can do it. I know I would be an a strong, you know, an asset. Um, just jump in. Yeah. Um, because you would also enjoy it, right? And I think that there's something about that when, when people are around other people that are loving what they're doing, it, you, do you just want them to just go? You're like, yes, you need to just do more of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, the times that I've been involved in creative projects, um, I've gotten unexpected praise. And I was like, oh, like I'm just kind of just doing what I think. And, and it almost is, it, it, it gets, I get excited about it. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. And I just kind of like let my, my mind do well, what, I, what, I, what I feel and what I really believe is, is the best and right. And um, then I've got people to say like, whoa, like you did a lot there you really transformed this or you're right on or, you know, that looks great. That's awesome. I, that's, that's all, just great. Simple as yeah. that. Yeah. It's really interesting. When, when, again, I think there's times when I see it and I express it um, like even for sales, like I make my proposals that are very, you know, aesthetically pleasing <laughs> color coded, et cetera. Um, and that's like a teeny, teeny little way. And I say to myself, like, I'm not really being paid to, you know, make this look nice, but I want to because it's my brand and I know that I can make it look better. Um, or just everyday things like, you know, I don't know anything. It could be fashion. It could be music. It could be a variety of, of ways that I guess I, I see art um, and I enjoy uh tweaking it and be like, ah, let me just, let me just, let me just straighten this yeah. out. I want to, I want to just make this look better. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I feel like, but I feel like they're not necessarily professions. Or if they are, they require a lot of um, schooling, background, experience that I'm not really there for. I feel like it's a knack, but I don't know that I have the I have the chops, and I get a little mm-hmm. worried about that, especially because I see like. One second. I'm gonna I'm gonna slow you down. I'm gonna slow you down right here, right? Because we we just we shifted from the spaces. We were in like a really like heart heart space, and then I could hear the mind coming back in here. You're like chops, yeah. knack. I could see it, and I could like I don't know. And I'm like I'm like hold on one second. We're we're leaving okay. place, we're leaving a place where you're really where you are powerful. Right, like, let's come yeah, that. yeah. Let's let's come let's come from that place. There's so there are a couple different things that are that are showing up. I wanna I wanna actually say something here. You said something. You said a sentence here. I'll invite you to go back and listen to it. But you said, um, I do what I feel and what I believe is right. You know, it's like, it's like the time, the times where you've seen it, it's like, I just like you, 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 and you've gotten great the feedback that you got is unexpected. The feedback you got is like unexpectedly great, you know, and all you did was just do what you feel and what you believed was right. That right there, what you feel, that's the heart. What you believe is right. That's the gut. And what I what I'm hearing from you is like when you when you stop the the brain from getting in the way, when you stop the mind from coming in and saying, Well, here goes all the reasons why you don't you don't have the chops, you don't have the experience, you don't have the things here. Like when you let when you stop that chatter from like from stopping you, it's not to say like you need to ignore like to cut out the chatter. Like, I don't know, like like it's probably going to continue to be there. Like, you know, I love, I love where they say real courage is not like doing something without like being afraid of peeing your pants. It's doing the act with wet pants. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like that is, that is like, there's an element of that that like, I want to kind of give space for. It's like, look, the fear might be there. And can we get to a place where you're like, oh, well, it probably, it's probably there for a reason. It's probably because like this is something I want. Is this something that like 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 this like I'm stepping off the beaten path and I'm stepping on the unconventional path? Like that's like if I'm on the beaten path, the fear doesn't show up, you know. But like perhaps that's your mind being able to say this is actually something that you want. So the stakes are higher here, and because of that, that's when fear comes in. And if and it might be that if you don't feel feel fear, you're doing the wrong things. If you don't feel fear, you're on your conventional path. I've heard people say that. Yeah. And so so there's an element here around what you're saying where I'm like, I'm like, when you could you you said earlier, you're like, I just want to pay respect to my heart. I just want to honor my heart. And you then later on you're like, when I when I do what I feel, when I honor my heart, and when I do what I believe is right, which is like, I allow my intuition and my gut to just like, it's like, I don't know how, I don't know why, but this is what I'm feeling right here. This is what I believe is right. And you, you don't have, you don't put on the, the filter of like, is this anatomically correct? Is this aesthetically the right thing to do? What, what, like, what do the professionals say? Like you get that out and you just create. People come back and they're like, this is really damn good. That's nice. Very. Uh, that's good to hear you shower, uh, expand, like put that in slow motion. Yeah. Rewind and slow mo this part. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think like like I want I want to slow mo with that there, not just as a sound bite, but as like like almost like a guide post, right? There's almost like two or three different. If we talked about what's the beat off the beaten path, and it's like. A, fear can be your compass whenever you're going off the beaten path. It's like no one else has been here before, right? So for you, like, you could use fear as a way of saying like, oh, okay, yeah, this is me closer to the, this is me closer to what Palmer is uniquely here to do on this earth. This is part of what Palmer uniquely has to contribute here. I must be on my unconventional path. Well, how do I know what, what direction, like, where do I go? How do, what tools do I have on for me? You know what? I'm going to honor my heart and let that come through. And I'll let the gut come in, right? The the brain part, like I'm only going to let that let me know. That's only going to tell me if I'm in the right direction or not. But it's not going to tell me what to do. Your real artistry, your real creativity, comes from different centers within your body. Based based on based on what you've been telling me here.
so I don't know what I don't know what to do about that. I guess. Yeah. All right. Cool. So I, I get you on that. The, I think I think the the biggest thing here is let me just check in with you. Does that resonate at all? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to tear myself down and you know say oh I can't. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna share a couple different things that you said as a as a bit of a reflection to give you a chance to look at it. Yeah. Right. Um, you said you don't know what to do about it, and that doesn't surprise me because like the do in part is, again comes up up here. What I'm really inviting you to do is to just allow. There's nothing you need to do like like. At work right now, you're like you like you can be regimented, you can be very process driven, you can be you can like use your drive there, and that's you doing, 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 doing. But when you're in your creative mode, like it doesn't seem like that's where it is. It feels like you're just allowing it to happen. You're getting, you're just not blocking the heart or the gut. You're just not blocking. You're you're, you're honoring it by just allowing it to have its space, right? So that will come to you when it comes. I'm like I'm not actually not worried about it because like you're so creative. This is so bursting out of you that you're walking down the street and you hear music in your head. You go somewhere else and you write down something you write like, like this is just like, like it's just so much of you, who you are is naturally in aligned with this stuff. What it feels like to me is that you're not allowing that to just take place. Yeah. You had said earlier, like, you know, what do you do with it? It's like you said earlier, your heart was saying, jump in, contribute in any way. And do you mind if I share like a, a like an image that came to mind when you said that to me? Please. Yeah. There was an element here of like of like I like <laughs> I don't know, I don't know where I don't know where you sit in this, but like it feels it feels like you were like the like the magic maker or the movie maker, like there was this element of it where it's like, you're like, I don't necessarily know how to write. Uh, I could also get behind the camera. I could do this, like I could sing and I could do like, I could be on the set and all this stuff. Like you really could be an anywhere, but like your thing is just to make sure the movie happens. So what came to mind when you, when you said this here, which is like, it's got this vision of you contributing in any way that you can right now, building up a network, building up, like building up a community, building up people who maybe did have movies that they really wanted to, to get out into the world right now, who did have like uplifting stories, rich uplifting stories that teach people how to be better in the world. And they, and they have it ready to go right now, but they don't have anyone that's going to uplift them. They don't have anyone that can help them like bring it together because they, all they have is the writing part but they don't know what the soundtrack might be for it, or they don't know how the lighting would be or what the visual aesthetic would be or, or any of those things. And I can see you playing, I can see you playing a part there. And maybe it starts with just contributing in any way and just being in the environment where these, these types of conversations could be had. So that that natural thing that you do has, a, has its own very natural outlet. I'm sure it's appreciated when you when you make things aesthetically pleasing in the sales world, and at the same time they may be like, okay, that's cool, but it's not like like we're not getting we're not getting you put in ten times work and we value it at three. I'm making this up, but generally speaking, I can no, I can. I, I I think I understand what you're saying. I, yeah. I think I would agree. Even. Yeah. So so like when you say jump in and contribute in any way, it actually feels it feels from our conversation that there's like a heaviness around. Like, what do you create? Like, and as in, as in like, what's the music that you create or what's the movie that you create or what's the right, what's the story that you write? And I'm like, I'm getting a sense here that like with all the other things that you have in terms of your strength, perhaps your creation isn't in creating any one of those individual elements, but it's the ability to bring all of those pieces together the ability to take other people who have it and to be able to respond to it. Yeah, that's going to work. No, that's not going to work, you know? And like have other people, have other people almost provide inputs for you to respond to as opposed to coming in with a blank slate. I, I just got that, like, I just got that sense of like, oh, I like, he, 
he's able to respond like, yep, no, yep, no, yep, no, this is it. This is happening. Oh, okay, cool. Hey, wait, this needs to be continuous throughout. Like you're able to respond really well to it. And maybe that's the way that your creation comes to life. You might create in a very different way than like, than what you're, what you're allowing for right now. Has there been a time where you've been able to create in some way that, that looks different than, than what you might have normally thought? And you're like, well, actually that was actually really easy. And I really enjoyed that process. Create something that looks different than what I would normally thought. Yeah. So let me, let me rephrase the, the, the question. Tell me about a time where you were able to create something that wasn't necessarily your idea. It wasn't necessarily you doing the creating part, but because it, but if it wasn't for you, it wouldn't have been created. Um, well, right now, uh, my church is building a reading room and, uh, it's prime real estate. It's right in Manhattan. It's on Central Park West and 68. It's literally completely undeveloped. And we have a committee which is, um, has gotten bids from three different architects, four different architects, kind of synthesized them and brought their proposals. And we're going to go through them and kind of advise the board. I'm currently the clerk for my church. <clears throat> And uh, the finance committee had an instant pushback and there was definitely a lot of tension in the room and we had to table the conversation. Um, the head person of the committee to build this new uh, retail space left the room, just was done for the night. And I had to circle back with the person and I had to be like, hey, uh, I noticed you're upset. I just really wanted to hear your thoughts. And they were like, thank you. Thanks for reaching out. Yeah, we could set something up. And I also had conversations with the person on the finance side of things. And I think that my experience uh, in boards, with boards, as well as um, just kind of my business practica, like I could understand things from the finance standpoint, and maybe just a little bit more of my habit. But I was like, I get you on this side. And then I was like, I love you on this side. We just need a little more TLC here. And so I called and I sort of understood more. And then I said, okay, great. Well, I really think that this is why this person was feeling that way. And I need you two to have another conversation. So make this happen. And then he was like, okay, yeah all right, we could put more into this. And I was like, let's think long-term, okay? This project is not dead. It's just a matter of when it's going to come together. And he's like, oh, okay. And he's a professional architect himself, a landscape architect. Uh, Well-respected. He made just 25 people at his firm. Um, and, uh, and, and that was kind of nice to think, hey, I understand this person almost from just – an emotional IQ, I see the drive and I understand that there is a problem and I don't want people to burn out and I will gel them. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that, that was, a re, you know, a month ago that issue has, has spurred and we're still working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, there's, we were talking, thank you for sharing that there. Like, like, there's an element of this here where it are like, I almost see like, I feel like you aren't any of, in a sense, you may not be any of the ingredients. I'm just playing with this here. You may not be like, if you're cooking something, you may not be any of the individual ingredients, but you're the pot that if there was no pot, there's just like these separate ingredients that just like, that like you can't, you can't make a stew. You can't make a gumbo. You can't make anything from it without the pot, <laughs> you know? Okay. And it, you know, and like, I, and there's just, there's just this thing here. I think, I think when we were talking in the past, we were talking about like you as a producer, right? You as a person that's like making this thing come to life and you have, you have creative, like you have creative decision in, in, so, in certain ways, you know, but like, you're like, how, like, it, it, it feels to me like that, that's, that's a space where if you can help people bring their, bring their things to life and continue to choose the projects that teach people how to be kinder, better, 
and like and uplift them to be able to, to choose like here goes the projects with a very rich story behind it rather than you having to come up with the story right now i have a feeling that a story will emerge for you when i ask you about like the movie and you're like i don't have a title right now i'm like okay there's there's probably there's probably something in there where it's like it doesn't have to be his movie in that way I've even thought that I would love to take a writing class so I could meet people and pick out who my favorite writer is and make their movie. Exactly. That's like, I, I, I get, I, get I, I, I really do feel that about you. I, I feel that you're someone who helps other people bring, make, break their, bring their visions to life. Right. And you do it in alignment with your vision. Like, like it's like their vision as long if it's aligned with yours, you're able to be like, okay, well, what do we need to do to make this come to life here? Like what's happening aesthetically, what's happening in all these different places there. It might just be that, that like your creation is like the over is the overarching element of it all. And I'm not like, I'm like, like I almost feel if it's like, um, I, I don't know. I don't know the terms in the entertainment world, you know, but I think about like the people who, are the executives on the studio or like not even like not even like a showrunner maybe a showrunner or something like that I, I don't know if i'm using the right terms here but it's like i watch i watch marvel's agents of shield i love that that tv show right and like in my mind i'm like there's each of the individual actors but each of them have to like it's not it's they have to use the script that's been given to them and they have to like do something with that, right? And then there's other people who are designing the sets, but they have to use the budget that's been given to them, you know? And there's like all these different things out there. And like at the end of the day, all these individual people are, they're getting paid very well. They're getting publicity, they're getting fame, they're getting all this stuff. But there's someone or some some ones on the top who you never see who really runs the show, you know? And it's like, and it's, and it's in alignment with them that the vision of the, of the season gets done, that everyone's going through in their green light. And it's like, yes, no, this is coming through. Like, that's what, when you're talking about this here, I feel like, I feel like you're like, I'm willing to have fingers in every single part of this thing, you know, but like for you to have to be amazing at any one of them, it's not, it's not really where the magic is. It's like, how do you bring all these different elements together to create something that couldn't be created on its own? Right now, well, let me just check in with you before before, before I go in. Let let that one sit in. Help 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 orient me. Are we pointing in the right direction in terms of something that that would be meaningful for you to play that part in the project? Yeah, yeah, it would be meaningful to me. Um, Because I can, I can rally a team. I know, I know, I can. And I think when you have your your heart speaking and saying, "I really want this to come together," you, you're gonna you're gonna bust through walls. You're gonna stay up late. You know, you're gonna you're gonna work during work. You're gonna do all these things because you just love it and you really want it to happen. Yeah, I think, and, I, and that that to me feels like really, really true. Like, because when you were talking earlier and you're saying like you come home from work and you're like, I don't know if I have the energy to do it. I'm like, I get it. And there's there's elements around like, can we improve your energy around uh, certain elements of that? Um, but I've also lived myself where my first when I first started working and doing business. It was like I would go to work and then nights and weekends, like I couldn't be like you couldn't hold me back from doing this other stuff, you know, like like like. I, I basically stored my energy during the day so I can come and get what I needed to get done like at night, ah. like, you know, or the work that I did at night was what energized me enough to go and do the other work that was helping to keep me safe, helping to keep a level of stability in my life, you know, yeah. but like, but at the same time, I'm like, this, 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 this is playing its part, but I know what it's like to really be pulled into like a future that I'm trying to create. Jump in, contribute in any way. That to me feels like if you're able to just start there, knowing that like the producing might be a place that you, that ultimately you can really serve people. And you're coming from the place of like almost producing and whatever, like whatever, um, how do I say it? Concentrated spurts you have. It may not be an entire production, 
but it might be with a writer that's that's stuck in trying to get their story off and it's like why isn't this why isn't this coming off the paper like where's the emotion in here and you being able to read it and be able to say yes no yes no okay here goes here goes where it's missing in the in the storyline you know or someone that's like that that has a sound that's looking for a soundtrack or a sound sound person and you're like hey let's like here we go like we're we're missing this element here like can we can we tweak it here like you have, you had ninety. Now you had ninety percent of it. Yeah, I can see this. I can see you playing this role too, Palmer. I'm, pull, I'm pulling out a couple of different things. So you let me know if any of these like resonate. But I can see you taking someone who has like ninety percent of the work or eighty percent of the work, and then you take them, you take them ten percent further or five percent further. So if they're eighty percent of the way, way there, they have this the score. And they're like something's just not right, and you're able to take them like ten percent further to be able to like this is the element that you're that you're missing. And then you let the creative person go back and like from that place, they can, they can complete their, you know, th their masterpiece. Cause they're like, that's what I was missing. You know, when I describe that to you, how does that feel to you? Does that feel like, like a place where you, that brings you joy? Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it does. I, I, you know, I recently listened to uh, a, a leadership slash I think it was a sales coach um, seminar. And the guy said, you know, you can be the hardest working person in the room, the company, great. You can put in 100 hours, great. You are grinding yourself to the bone with that and hopefully you get good work out of it. But even still, you're only two and a half times greater than the average person who's putting in 40 hours. And his thing was, if you can fill somebody else's sale and you can fill five people's sale or 10 people's sale then you are 500 times as effective or a thousand times as effective as you yourself could be so to sort of let that other person grow and give them that push and then you you just kind of you you watch it all go, and you encourage them, and you say, "I love you. I love what you're doing. You're you're, you're this is beautiful. Keep going. Keep going." And then you, you can kind of give that next that person, "Oh, all right, all right, let's all right, let me, all right, let me do it." And then you know, then their rockets, you know, they're they're shooting off to off to the stars, kind of thing. Yeah, dude, that's like. And let me just check in with you. When he said that, when you hear that, is that something that resonates with you? Is that something that like on an energy level, like if you to give it a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the highest and one being like non-existent, <clears throat> what, what does that kind of sit for you in terms of? Uh, I, I, would, I would say high, higher end, um, I would say eight, maybe nine. I kind of feel like I have to feel the right mission. I don't know if like a sales manager is exactly the right mission. Uh, but I love the element of like just leadership that you can, you can encourage other people and help them light up and develop and work in their way. Yeah. Um, and that, that kind of feels good to me because that is something that like, I like to, I like to have that influence over someone and I like to sort of shine on. I've always felt that uh, the best people at the top are the people that are looking down. People will say, how can I help you be better? How can I help you be better? Thank you for everything that you do because I can only be here if you lift me up. Kind of thing. Yeah. 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 I think there's something really, really key around when you said contribute in any way. It wasn't jump in and create in any way. It wasn't jump in and like, you know, just like I want to contribute in some way like and like and so that, that like i think that that really does speak to what what you're talking about there's an assessment that i took i'll probably actually see uh have you taken an assessment called wealth dynamics yeah. okay it's been big on my mind recently uh, it kind of showed me a lot um and there's there's things that you're talking about that i'm like hmm, I, I, I wonder it talks about different ways to capture wealth along the way right in terms of how how you provide how, how you help people i'm not sure what yours is um off, off the bat here, but there's something around here where it's like you just have you seem to like light up around like helping others like with hands on like motivation like being in there and be like hey like we can get you there like just when we get done let's let's do it so I think like I, I I would really look into 
I mean, even that, so I, I'm, I, my mind, my mind provides like new, new possibilities and makes new connections on the way. I could see you even as like a coach or consultant and like a creative coach or consultant to someone, you know? And it's like, it's like, look, we have like, you can, you can play the producer role and like, I can see in certain roles, like, um, like on the set somewhere, like there's, there's a role that is both a, like a leader and a creative consultant and like, and it's also working as a coach to like help them figure out their things, you know, all that, you know? Um, and I, I think, I think what I'm hearing from you is like, you, like it's the leadership here. You want to lead the creation of something like that, you know, and, and, the, and the journey that, that continues going on. And I think that like there, there are, what gets in your way is thinking that you need to have a credential or you need to have like skills along the way. It's not to say that you won't build your skills along the way, but it's like, it's, it's starting at, it's starting at the ground floor and where you are. And when I say the ground floor, I actually don't know if I really mean that. It means starting wherever you are. <laughs> That's what I mean. Starting wherever you are in the line, in alignment with where, with where you want to I'm right now having these conversations with you and other people through group coaching conversations. It, but I know that as I continue to grow, I'm actually going to be, be doing things where I'm investing in different individuals. I might invest in, I might, I might invest in coaching someone um, or leading their team for their organization and getting like taking shares as I go along with it. Like there's, there's different things that are going along that, that are, that are evolving in my mind for where I am right now. Like we're having these group conversations. We're having these one-on-one -on -one conversations. It was major for me to get to a place where I was saying, Hey, I'm going to coach. I'm going to record it. And we're going to share it with other people. Like that was super, I've been stuck on that for months. I'm going to do it for a long time. I've been stuck on it for months. Uh, and it's, but it's where I am right now. And I'd be really curious. What's coming up for me is like, it's a difference between I was, I'll use the world cup, but I think we can use like film in this case. It's like, it's like someone can watch every single episode of every single game of the world cup or every single match that's, that's in their favorite sport. But it doesn't mean that if someone tossed them the soccer ball, they would be, they would be able to amaze it. Right. So I, I feel, I feel like, I feel like you're at, you're at that place too, where it's like, great. Like when it comes to entertainment, when it comes to like doing things like you got it. You can see it. You have you have an intuitive vibe to it. You you like you pick up on these things here. But you but like if someone tossed you the soccer ball or the movie reel or whatever it was, a proverbial soccer ball right now, like now is the time to go and start creating however it looks like for you. So jump in, contribute in any way. And to allow yourself to just do what you feel like you're like you're like if you're able to, if you came from those places and this is the thing that's, that's, that's hard Palmer. Cause a part of me wants to go out and say like, okay, now next step, do this then do this then do that. I'm like, you can do that. You can, you can lay out what the next steps are when you're on a beaten path. Mm -hmm. The reason like when you're, if you're heading toward conventional success, then great. Like you will, like you can go read something and say, do this, then do this, then do that. But you, you like the like the unconventional path, the the beat, the off the beaten path is by its very definition something that hasn't been defined. So I can't give you like here goes all the next steps here. What I'm trying to do is give you a compass, give you a compass to like navigate your path, give you a compass to saying like, okay, are you doing what you feel and are you doing what you believe is right? Are you jumping in and contributing in any way that you can, knowing that you'll be able to respond, you'll be able to tweak, you'll be able to see things that other people aren't seeing, but you need to be in the place where there's, there's energy there. There's, there's something for you to respond to. Yeah. No, like honoring your heart and allowing that to, to, to just like be, be able to just like jump in. Like if you did those things and then using fear as like, okay, wait, this is the part that, that actually kind of, it throws me off. I, I like, I'm a little bit afraid of this here. Great. And that probably is a direction that you should take. And you have within you your own overall context of the types of projects that, I, that I'm about are about uplifting people. Like you have all the elements right now. Yeah. 
something it just happens to come to me. I don't know if it's a direct response to what you said. I mean, thank you is my direct response. Um, but something that's come to me is my own feeling of how competent or effective I can be, um, in particular in a group. Um, I don't mean it to seem conceited, but I do find that what I contribute is uh, impactful, um, whether it's to not say anything and sit back, or whether it's to get to the root of something. And, you know, no one, I guess it's, it's something I've sort of thought about a little bit and I'm sharing with you because it's probably good for me to hear that, you know, every day is a new day and no one has the perfect path, the perfect background. Um, all we can do is just our best, like listen and just try to be, um, I guess listen to your heart and listen to something that is true. Uh, block yourself from any sort of noise or friction and, and just act in that moment that feels uh, inspired. Um, and I'm saying that because I'm proud of the, the works that I've done and the groups that I've been a part of. And it helps me feel a bit more accomplished and smarter and like sort of valuable um, despite I didn't maybe have the perfect background because I know that when I'm there, I still feel like I'm doing very good work. Um, so that's a sort of a vote of confidence for myself. Paul, I got I to gotta acknowledge you. I got to just, just for you to be able to, to articulate that and to capture that vote of confidence for yourself. Because there's nothing I can say here that's going to change anything for you. This whole thing needs to be for you. So for you to do that, to, for you to articulate and for you to hear it for yourself and to, to bring that in for yourself, I really want to acknowledge you because, like, you get it. You get it. And what I, what I see with you taking there is, like, I see you taking ownership of what you want to create from that. And I, and that, I really respect you for that, and I'm going to call that out in this case here. You know? And the fun parts become, yeah, playing with exactly what you're talking about. Like, you know, maybe it's not despite anything, but because of it because you don't know what's going on, because you don't have the same kind of expertise. Like, like that's, that's the gift that I bring to people. I show up on, I show up on my coaching calls and I have no plan. The times where I have plans are where it's like, it's like I'm trying to force everyone into like this small, like hole and, <laughs> really, you know, and the thing that would really help them is just to give them space. They're forced into to a hole every other place. But because I have a plan, because I'm like, I have my process. There's a thing that it's totally detrimental to people who are really creative. If I'm trying to take them down my beaten path, that's when everything goes off. So perhaps the greatest gift that you have is the fact that you don't know. Mm. The greatest gift that you have is that you haven't, you haven't been trained by all the same people to see all the things. Like if you, if like, <coughs> then anyone else could do that. What you're bringing is your own unique thing. You're like, this is, this is what I've picked up. That's your, that's your magic sauce. Yeah, that's your, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that's important in a world full of other creators who are also trying to be original to have someone in there that can actually be original with them as opposed to trained originality, you know, creative on cue, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's, it feels like there's a lot of space there. And I think and I, as we wrap up here, there's something that came up when you were talking about you know, uh, I, I appreciate you for calling out your strengths. I like to say with, with, when I coach people, like I, I create a brag zone and you, you're, you're willing to just be in it. So I thank you for it. Where I'm like, you can never come off too, you can never come off cocky. You can never come off arrogant. Like you can put humility to the side because you play a big game in life. You are good with people. You are good with groups. And we need it. Like, if we don't call that out, you're going to get caught doing being the best individual contributor, but not getting anywhere near as where you would be if you were, you know, the 500 X, the 2.5 X, we can see 2.5 and people get impressed with 2.5. That's conventional success. 
oh, wow, you do so much. How do you get to be so productive? You know, like, what's really productive? Like being able to have multiple projects where other people are taking, taking care of things and they're bringing together all these different visions and you're coming in tweaking and getting it to where it needs to be. Like that to me is like, that's really cool. I was talking to my coach the other day and I was like, I was like, you know, one thing that I, I, I'm, I have to call out in our relationship is that you've only ever seen me contribute as an individual contributor working alone. I'm building out my team right now, but I'm like, you don't even know how good I am as an individual contributor with a team. Like I change. I'm better when I'm working with a team than when I'm working alone. And you've, and I'm like, and like, and the thing that I really feel sad about is that you've never seen me lead my own team. Cause that's when the real magic happens. Mm. Well, you, you were a great, uh, president. Yeah. Uh, and well, I, I, like, I, I appreciate hearing that there. And I think that like, as we wrap up here, I think, I think I'd like to invite you into something. I'd like to invite people into, uh, a quest at the end of our, at the end of these things here. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, first, let me, uh, before we get to the invitation, what would you say is like, what's the one thing that if you acted on over the next two I only want to make it two weeks. In the next seven days, right? If you, if, what's the one thing that if you acted on in the next seven days, it could be a very small thing, but if you did it, it would change everything for you. Sign up for a writing class. Sign up for a writing class. Done. So let's let's do that then. Let's let's keep it at this point. So you know what that one action is, right? Yeah. To sign up for a writing class. And so the next, before. I like to like continue to support in between the way I like to say is that the coaching that you're experiencing right now, this is, this is, it's just beginning. It's what happens in between the times that we talk. It's what you do with it, where all the magic comes. Otherwise it's just a really good conversation. It's a difference between a life changing insight and life changing impact. The impact happens with what you do afterwards, right? Where, where I would like, so you have your specific action, sign up for the writing class. I also like to give a specific practice. So between now and the next two weeks here, um, there's an element of what I love to see. The love to see is that you can choose here. This is an invitation for you. Either find in one or two different places where you can get on a set and contribute in any way, even if it's showing up and saying, hi, I just want to let you know you're doing a great job here. You know, <laughs> like whatever, whatever, like you said anyway, you know, like, so whatever, whatever that looks like. But I, I feel that would be really meaningful. The second thing I was going to say was to, was to come off, was to, was to practice being the leader that you are and putting yourself in like, and, and to like start capturing moments where you are bringing together the group or you're creating in ways that may not necessarily be you physically or voice the song. But out of all these here, Palmer, I think that you taking on a practice of finding one way to contribute in any way in this towards a set here, I think that would be like the, the, like the biggest edge and the thing that will help you move, move the most, that would be the biggest needle, needle mover. What are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I love it because it seems low lift if I just jump in, right, and see what happens. I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow with anything. Um, and that's, that's yeah. your skill. That's your gift, the fact that you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's nice to think that there's a couple of pointed things and it is, it is nice to light a fire, but you have to keep it burning, I guess. And it's up to me to feed the, feed the fire, to do the steps. And then hopefully I can report back to you something I'm proud about or excited and continue to, um, develop flourish all right so let's do that yeah i like to create the space so since we're here i'm going to invite you to um a private coaching um uh group that i have where you can come in there's other people who are also getting coached they're all on their own paths none of them are beaten you know and they're all off doing different different things and i want to kind of give you all a chance to see each other as you're on your own individual journeys um and okay. supported and inspired and challenged by one another too so uh, cool. You, you can report to me and also like get also support from others uh, through that there. I'm playing nice. around with, with this with this right now. 
um, to see how where I want to take it. So um, I'll send I'll send you a message as someone who's been on on this conversation with me here, um, and and invite you into that. And that's I would like for you to re to report through that way, right? Within the next within the next two weeks, I would love to know about where you've gone and and where you've gone and contributed. And I would in my mind three anywhere between three and five ways of contributing. It might be one big contribution and then you're like, I'm contributing five, five ways as being a member of this team. But I would love to see you like, like really, really try and find at least three opportunities to contribute in any way toward the world of like being in a set. Okay. Three ways. Three ways. In, in two weeks, I send, you're going to send me a, a link that's I'll an invitation group yeah. video chat. Is that what it is? Good for your um, chat? Right now, actually, to tell you the truth, I'm trying to figure out how I want to do it. Right now, it lives as a Facebook group. And the people who I've been having conversations with like this, and it is there, it might end up okay. being that we pull it into a group video chat, you know, maybe like at, at some point. Like, But for right now, I think the the update, I actually, actually, actually kind of like the idea of a group video chat. So thank you, Palmer. I, that might be how how it evolves. Like, 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 I don't know. I'm trying to create it with, like, with, and I'm in a very similar place. I'm like, what would serve you? What would say? I think it would. Be, I think it would be cool to hear people like nights at the round table. You know, like yeah. this is my mission. This is my individual thing. We can each kind of say like, "Have you tried this?" Or looks like you're really excited about that because sometimes to hear a lot of people say it like just stacks on the affirmation. Yeah. You know, yeah. as opposed to Nemo, who I love and trust. You know. I, I, I run into this a lot. I run into this a lot. This is also part of the, hey, it works for you. But there's, there's, there's a lot of, there's a, again, there's a lot that comes in from the, the, the standpoint of a group. When you get multiple, multiple mirrors all shining in on you, you know, yeah. and being able to yeah. see things from different perspectives. And each of them are going to, they all have a different thing as opposed to Nemo just has this view. But yeah. to get that from people coming at all different angles based on their own experiences you know, oh, I know someone who's done, uh, who's been a, a producer. Sure, I'll put you in touch. Even, you know, like that's where we're able to create those kinds of stuff there. So, um, I'm I'm playing with it. I'm experimenting myself, and I, I'm willing to to be messy as I'm trying to figure it out, but do it in service of everyone. So, the first step is um, that you'll get an invitation to the Facebook group. Um, go ahead, introduce yourself into it. Um, you get an email tomorrow. Introduce yourself into it. Let them know what you're working on for the for the next two weeks. And then like come sure. in and, and talk and it's something that's brand new. So it's like, it's like there's only a few people in it and there's not, it's not going to be something that's like heavily active at this point, but that's okay. Cause I'm there and you're there. And like, I think that this gives us a chance to be able to say like, as more people come in, we'll have more and more of these opportunities to share and be inspired and just see where it goes. I'm, I'm taking, right. I'm, I'm in the same, I'm in a very similar position. It's like, let's just see where it goes. Right. All right. Cool. All right, man. Yeah, yeah. So I want to yeah. thank you here. Um, and we'll just, we'll end, we'll end this uh, right here. Thank you. Good, good, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. High five, high five. Wow. -pow! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so what we're going to do here is.